So we're ready to move on to the quotient rule. Okay, so <clears throat> the quotient rule looks somewhat similar to the product rule. Um, the main difference is, of course, now we're dealing with a quotient of two functions instead of a product of two functions. Um, over on this side, you'll notice that there are two um, very obvious differences. One being that we have a minus sign here instead of a plus sign in the, uh, in the numerator. Otherwise, we have that same pattern, right? Derivative of the first times the second, first times the derivative of the second. Uh, the other difference is this denominator. It's the function that we had on the bottom over here, g of x. It appears again, but you'll notice that it appears to the second power. Okay, so this is one of these things that you got to make sure you're careful about remembering. Um, so the quotient rule is, is no harder to use than the product rule, although it's messy. Um, a lot of people try to avoid the quotient rule if they can because it is really it is a really messy result, right? Um, and but aside from being a little messy, the only other real difficulty with it is that it can be tricky to remember, right? Um, otherwise, it's it's more or less okay. Um, if you're if you're wondering where this uh, where this comes from, kind of you know the the justification. I'm not going to do a full proof here, um, if we were going to look at the difference quotient, right? Um, we'll skip even doing the limit, but if we just look at the difference quotient, so we would have f of x plus h over g of x plus h minus f of x, oops, sorry, f of x over, over g of x, and then that whole thing, of course, would be divided by h. There would be um, that h on the bottom, if you like. Well, you've got a difference of two fractions, so we've, we've seen enough of these examples to know that the first thing you've got to do when you've got a difference of fractions is get a common denominator. Okay, so now we have 1 over h, let's just put that out front. We're going to have f at x plus h times g of x, right? We multiply top and bottom here by g of x. Over here, we multiply top and bottom by g of x plus h. So we're going to have f of x times g of x plus h. Okay, over g of x plus h times g of x. All right, um, now we're going to do a trick similar to what we did <coughs> In the product rule, we need to add and subtract something to make things work out. And in this case, the thing that we add and subtract is going to be just f of x times g of x. Okay? Times g of x. So we're going to subtract f of x times g of x. Okay. Minus Well, we still have to add it back in, right? Okay. So we have that whole mess. over g of x plus h times g of x. And maybe now you can see how the grouping is going to go. And we'll probably leave it at this next line, and you'll be able to sort of see where we go from here. Um, here I'm going to factor out a g of x from the, uh, from the first one. So we're going to have the following. We're going to have, so 1 over h times well, let's even leave it like this. g of x plus h times g of x. Let's leave those denominators out there. Times, well, we're going to have this. f of x plus h minus f of x times g of x. And if we put a minus sign out front, 
minus f of x times g of x plus h. Well, minus, minus to get that plus, right? So minus g of x. Okay? So now you can see what would happen, right? We can divide each of these two terms by the h. We take the limit. This is going to give me an f prime. That's going to give me a g prime. When h goes to 0, this is going to be g of x times g of x. That gives us the g of x squared. Okay? So that's where the quotient rule comes from. Um, so if you've gotten used to the product rule pattern, um, moving to the quotient rule isn't too bad. You've got to remember to change a sign, and you've got to remember that you have this denominator.